What's going on, everybody? It's your host, Moose, coming at you with a special edition, special afternoon edition of the Viper's Nest. Sad, sad day in sports. I mean, sad, sad day in what's going on in the world right now, of course, with the outbreak of coronavirus, COVID-19. A little bit more of a serious tone for this podcast. Uh, XFL, of course, just about to announce that they also will be suspending play, uh, given that they only have about six or seven weeks left in their season. That basically puts a nail on the coffin for the 2020 XFL season. Definitely a sad, sad day for us big XFL fans. Like we always do as we get going here on the Viper's Nest, part of the Sports Heap network of shows. You know how it goes. Moose always says it. Let's hit that intro. having a great Thursday afternoon, a special Thursday edition, of course, still planning on going to Tampa or going somewhere for vacation. I was supposed to take a cruise. That's potentially not looking like a great idea. So we, we might have some backup plans for PTO. It's been a crazy week, not just in the sports world, but uh, just trying to get through work and trying to get through uh, what I think is food poisoning. <laughs> Hopefully not COVID-19. Uh, no, uh, I definitely ate some bad bad food Tuesday night. Uh, and I've had a rough 24 hours, to say the least. So, recovering now. Here in the old school, Mike also had Bucks jersey, of course. Some of the rumors coming out is the Bucks are literally, quite literally, going back to the return to glory uh, jerseys. Uh, Jerseys that look extremely similar to the Super Bowl, the Super Bowl era jerseys uh, from '97 and 2013. I think we wore them. So some of the, hopefully that news will be coming out in the next few weeks. What the new Bucks jerseys are going to look like. I think the rumors too were that the Browns were kind of stepping back to what their old school looking jerseys as well. Excited to see what the Falcons would look like. Uh, rumors is that they might be going with the red. Red helmets back to their 70s type of look. Welcome to the Viper's Nest, episode number 13, of course. Could be our last episode for quite a bit. So sad, sad day. The news, of course, coming, just trickling down today with NCAA tournament being canceled and various other sports uh, organizations and just choosing... For player safety and fan safety to go ahead and either cancel or suspend the season for a couple of weeks or months. Hopefully that leads us into the playoffs for NHL and NBA. But for the XFL, it looks like it could spell the end of the season. Uh, unless, you know, I, I think, of course, Houston was far and away the best team. I'm not sure you'd pick from the East to play in a championship game if you're just going to go straight to a championship game, uh, especially with a three-way tie (laughs) at three and two for all the teams in the East. So you'll see topics over here for today's show, but I guess we'll kind of treat it like a regular show. Probably won't speak as much uh, and just kind of be sad, really, at, you know, this league, I didn't expect I would like it as much. Uh, You know, this is kind of a experimental type thing you know it's a tampa team so emrod and i figured hey why don't we do a podcast kind of a slow slow period of time you know especially after we were mowing through with ten dollar sports and the bucking hangover which are focused on the buccaneers and and uh basically football betting and college sports betting during the fall uh we were able to kind of bump up viper's nest and get the thunderdome podcast going as well but looks like we'll be on hiatus from both of those sadly 
with the suspension of both XFL and NHL action. So, I don't know if it's really worth it to get ready for week six. But let's talk let's talk what could have been for this week at least a little bit, right? A couple big games that I think would have been really interesting to see, of course. You heard it on Hot Takes last episode. I really think this could have been the week that the Roughnecks could have lost. So maybe fortunate that uh, there will always forever be the perfect team. But I think this is... If it weren't for this week, I think they, they probably win out. Especially with the Guardians, the way they've been playing. Luis Perez playing pretty good. Running game, getting going. And, I mean, I'll say it. Probably the best defense they were going to face all year in terms of pressure and uh, getting in the backfield. I think Houston would have had a tough task in, you know, even if New York isn't the most imposing place to play with, you know, seven or 8,000 in a 90,000-seat stadium. I mean... I don't know. Uh, it would have been interesting to see how th that matchup. So it's a, it's a shame. Shame we won't be seeing that matchup. I think it would have been great to see that New York defense against uh, the MVPs. Uh, Cam Phillips and all. P.J. Walker on that Houston offense. You know, it's funny. I was looking at the spreads. And if that's not an indicator, I don't know what is. That couldn't even find them on my sports uh, gambling application I use, so no no game lines were available. So uh, you know I didn't really get a chance to see what the lines were. If it was relatively close, I probably would have taken the Guardians here uh, with the spread more than likely. I bet you they would have been down uh, four points, maybe five points at most. So probably would have taken the Guardians here, uh, and of course they were playing. They were slated to play. The 2 p.m. game on ABC. Vipers and Battlehawks. The game I was hoping to get to. Sadly, it won't be happening. But uh, they were slated to play the 5 p.m. game on Saturday. Sunday's game. I really thought this was going to be an interesting matchup. Renegades, Defenders. Defenders coming off a big win. Big bounce back win against the Battlehawks. 15-6 last week. I think they could have gotten some momentum going here. And really to keep pace out in the East. Battle uh, with all three team, all the three and two teams playing other teams. So really, really important that all of them win. I think this would have been an interesting game again with Landry Jones not in the fold. Would have really come down to DC's newfound running game, maybe some increased efficiency from their backup quarterback. I mean Philip Nelson. I mean he's played like a second tier talent quarterback, unfortunately. Uh, that's just it's just the reality. When you're looking at Landry Jones versus Philip Nelson. It's just not gonna go. You know, there's just a clear, there's been a clear offensive or talent gap there. Uh, of course, Presley and Pumphrey, the big stories for the DC Defenders running game last week. So, I would have said, were they able to control the ground game, this should be a pretty pretty decent win for the defenders i mean dallas defense is pretty not uh, pretty decent uh where are the latest statistics on rushing yards given up uh, i have to give it to the xfl they've stepped up their stat game a little bit of course just in time for her the season to be suspended let's look on defense here really quick i just had these written down oh, i only had the points uh allowed per game uh, rush yards, so yeah, on defense, I guess they're not showing average defensive yards given up. Uh, only points against and the yards allowed in general. Uh, Dallas defense, kind of uh, 318 yards on average, which is mid-tier. But, you know, again, not a great indicator of, you know, five, there are six total sacks, which is pretty much dead last. Not great on the turnover margin. Points against against mid tier and average points against mid tier. I mean, I, I think it would have been a good matchup. So, if I had to make the pick here, I think I go defenders with the home field advantage of the beer snake, beer cup snake. Probably would have been defenders plus 
I'd probably say plus five here too, or minus five. Probably would take the defenders. I'll take the defenders straight up on this one. And then, of course, LA Wildcats playing against the Seattle Dragons. And this game, due to local regulations just passed in Seattle and King County, uh, would have been played behind closed doors, so no crowds. So we won't even get to see what that looked like in the XFL. Again, both teams on the up and up. LA starting to make some noise out in the West, really making a claim for that second spot to play the potential semifinal game had there been one. And Seattle really looked like they were getting their getting their stuff together. I mean, BJ Daniels has given the team a different look. And it's a shame that they're not going to be able to finish this out and maybe make a little bit of a run there. I think they were still a little deficient on offense and relied too much on a defense that was mediocre at best. But still some noise to be made there, Seattle Dragons, and we'll, we'll miss we'll miss the games out west. Of course, a big matchup that won't be, and yours truly, Moose, unfortunately not in attendance with the Fang Gang, is... The battle. This was a huge game. This was going to be a must-win game to keep us in it. And Battlehawks Vipers on Saturday night would have been a lot of fun. This would have been a tough one. I think this would have been a tough one for the Vipers. I wouldn't have thought that the Battlehawks would have had two back-to-back games, especially how the Vipers' defense played last week against LA, definitely being exposed a little bit. I this probably could have been a little bit of a high-scoring game, maybe not as high as the L.A. Vipers game, but I think this could have been a little bit of a shootout back and forth. But ultimately, I would have thought this would go the Battlehawks way. Vipers always seem to find a way to lose football games. They've had to control Jordan Tamu. We've struggled against stronger wide receivers. Pearson Al has proven to be a pretty formidable weapon. And if they were able to get balance of the running game of Matt Jones, I think it would have been a pretty solid win for the Battlehawks here. Probably would have been favored despite the home field advantage. Probably would have been Battlehawks. Yeah, maybe. I like that five number. Maybe five and a half. And I probably would have taken the Battlehawks here. Uh, probably straight up on the money line. Uh, Vipers, I think I would have liked them to play them close. I oh, forgot to move this stuff around. So there's your preview. Kind of a quick preview, not really breaking it down too much again. Big news coming out is the soon-to-be-fully-announced suspension. Yep, there it is. The suspension of the XFL. It's just really disappointing. Uh, especially with how fun the league was. Really, I just loved it. I love watching it every day. It was on. It was just so much fun to watch. I don't know, a welcome change. I mean, it was it's everything that spring football should have been and you know, people were debating still, oh, the television ratings were dropping and attendance was going down. I mean, sure, I think there was an element of football overkill in there, but still, I mean, I, I loved it. I think it helped pass the time on the weekends doing chores and whatnot and you know, it gave us great discussion points for a, a pretty awesome podcast, right? So that's it for your Battlehawks Vipers preview. Let's go to tail of the tape really quick. See how we would have matched up against the Battlehawks. Let's switch it over to the full screen. So again, if you're out there on the YouTube world, you'll get to see the screens over here on full screen. But of course, if you're listening to us in podcast mode, uh, I'll try my best to describe what's going on. I forgot to preload our new screen, so I'll have to do that for you right now on the fly. That's okay. We got them ready to go here. Got the three keys. Got the tail of the tape. That's all we need. All right. Let's look at tail of the tape. And there it is, right in front of you. You got the three and two Battle Hawks, one and four Vipers. I'm going to give the advantage to Jordan Tamu in the quarterback slot. I think Taylor Cornelius has been too just unpredictable, really. Uh, you, we, you have the big board behind me. 
Six of those nine are Taylor Cornelius's over four or five games. So, again, he's been throwing a pick a game, essentially. Wide receiver tight ends, I think that, that was a little bit closer than you'd think. But with the emergence of Jalen Tolliver and, of course, big bad Dan Williams and even Nick Truesdale to a degree who been a little bit of a disappointment this year, going to give the wide receiving core battle to the Vipers. Same thing with the running back. Though this is closer now that uh, Jacques Patrick is injured and it wasn't clear if he was going to be able to be back for this game. Uh, Matt Jones and Christ, uh, Christine Michael, you know, formidable running back dude, probably this ranked right behind the Vipers in rushing and in terms of being a rushing duo. But I'm going to give the slight edge, especially the performance last week, to the Vipers. I think offensive lines are pretty even when we're looking at the sacks given up stacks. I think they were both at 12 over five games. Of course, a lot of those coming against uh, New York and Seattle for the Vipers. Those first two games, they've really shut it down. And they've been pretty evenly spread out for the Battle Hawks. And again, these are the t- some of the best rushing teams in the league. you got to have some big boys that can open up some holes. And I- I'd say the offensive lines for each are evenly matched. I think where, this, I think where the slight advantage is going to come is defense and special teams. Uh, I think the return game for the Battle Hawks might be a little bit more effective than that of the Vipers. But on top of that, their defense on average puts a little bit more pressure on the quarterback and has performed a little bit better in terms of limiting yards given up by opposing offenses. So I'm going to give them the advantage. And then, of course, talked about good, bad, and ugly last episode, episode 12. Coaching advantage is going to have to go to the Battle Hawks here. I don't even remember their coach's name right now. Just seeing the performance of our coaches over the last few weeks is good enough for me to give the advantage to the Battle Hawks. Not going to overthink this one. So big blue check mark going on the Battle Hawks logo. I would have picked them to be the big winners in this one. And of course, the three keys to the game, what we needed to be successful. I think we would have had to forget about last week. I mean, that was a big disappointment, a big, big, big disappointment. And that's a game that sometimes you carry with you. That's one that you should have had, could have had, would have had. But it's just important to keep pounding, whether that's running the ball or, or keep with some of the positive changes we've been able to implement over the last few weeks. Again, the offensive line has to continue to dominate. I think they're pretty well matched with the offensive line of the of the Battle Hawks. So it was really who was going to control the line on offense. And then, of course, just coaching has got to be better in all situations. We've got to be making some better decisions. You know, we, we pointed out a little bit last week about some of the conservative play calling, not going for it on fourth down when it was you know pretty low risk and at a favorable part of the you know part of the field you know despite us going are we 20 25 percent on third down last week you know not necessarily suggesting that fourth down would have gone any better but you know sometimes we got to put some pressure on there and play a little play a little less conservatively in order to get the results that we're seeking so again would have been down to coaching got to be a little bit better all around you know have jerry not calling blitzes 10 out of 10 plays uh or maybe some the more effective blitz is not leaving our guys out to dry in the secondary, especially with a, a pretty decent passing game and personnel, among others. So, yeah, kind of a quick episode today. Again, a little bit of a disappointment out there. Of course, foreshad- doesn't it's overshadowed by how serious the situation is. Uh, you know, I, I work in healthcare. Definitely taking it seriously. We're getting our our preparation ready to go for uh, potential community transmitted diseases, uh, or the community for it to move into a community transmitted phase, which is a lot different than if just exposure via travel. So just really getting our local population ready to go here in Austin, Texas, and mobilizing and ready to be that frontline response, uh, which is uh, my team's job here in Austin 
it's been fun. I'm, I'm sad this is coming to an end. I've really, it's a shame Emrod couldn't join us a little bit more than he could. Uh, you know, life happens. Had an opportunity to get his dream house, so I know he's he's really happy with how that's turning out. And, you know, 2021, here we go. I know Vince McMahon has committed to three years of this. Hopefully we can build up, we can build the brand up again. I know it'll be on hiatus for 10 months here, but really, truly can't believe i don't think this other than of course the season being suspended uh, i don't think the season could have gotten any better you've had some great competitive football you've had some great performances i think you got some players that maybe have earned themselves earned them the, their way onto an nfl roster i mean i i'm hoping to see a few of the guys in the xfl jump up there and get their chance and you know unfortunately for others this this was their last shot and and you know, hopefully better luck next year if you're able to make the teams. So yeah, it's been it's been a pleasure. Never know if there's ever any XFL news, we'll always drop a random episode or two of the Vipers Nest. Hope you've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it. Twitter still be running strong, of course, as we kind of get through this period of minimal or no sports. So I think it's going to be odd. So. But always make sure to check us out on Twitter at Moose underscore TSH. That's my handle. And I think Emrods is down there scrolling at Emrod underscore TSH. We should be getting back into it as sports go, gets back to the swing of things, hopefully in the next month or two. Stay safe out there. Wash your hands, please. It's a very effective way is just washing your hands. And, of course, it's Moose signing off. From the Viper's Nest, stay on the lookout for Season 2 of the Viper's Nest. Hopefully in the next couple months, we'll likely be getting back at it with the Bucking Hangover, our Buccaneers show, in the next few months as free agency starts heating up. Once it's confirmed that Tom Brady is going to come and break the bank here in Tampa, and of course once the Buccaneers uniforms are announced, we'll want to talk uniforms and draft as well, so... We'll be back at it with Bucking Hangover. Be on the lookout for that. And, of course, Thunderdome Puckcast likely going to be suspended until the NHL playoffs come into play. Uh, looks like they'll probably keep the standings the way they are. Uh, so Lightning probably getting ready to play uh, play host to the Toronto Maple Leafs in that first round of the Stanley Cup playoffs in the upcoming months. So it should be exciting. Kind of a free pass to the playoffs. I'll take it. Get some time for Stamkos to get out healthy. Just trying to find the silver lining, everybody. Hope you have a great rest of your weekend. Go Vipers. We'll see you in 2021. Take care. It's been Moose with the Sports Heap. Take care.